Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Well, welcome back. Please tell me, what did you guys think? Hello, Marilyn King, LDSW, Lucy Wynn, Rhonda Bryant, Lorna Williams, and Foo Fancy Fancy, um, Aesthetic Youngi, is that right? Aesthetic, okay. Uh, McKenzie, Hello to huh, Carol Perdue and Helene Groen and who else do we have here? Donna Reese, Vanessa Jones, uh, Lydia Washington, and oh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Jedi Lady EJ Adage. Okay. And who else? Uh, anyway, welcome, everybody. Welcome back, should I say. Um, hi, Mimi M. Okay. Misty Blue, hi. Sister and Cece. Aya Patsy, yes. Set the mood. I hope so. Do, 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 chick. Do, 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 chick. What's your name? Chuk. Who's your daddy? Chuk. I set in the mood, isn't it? <laughs> Got to get some of that old 70s loving, right? Okay. Do, 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 chuk. Do, 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 chuk. Is he rich? Is he someone like me? Chuk. <laughs> oh, man. If you guys are wondering, who do I have to thank for this bell? I don't know. Is their name on the screen right now? And let me give you a hint. It's not Harry or Anderson. Uh, do, 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 chico. Do, 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 chico. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Baron, please share with Anita from Duke and I how the ad... You know, I was thinking about that, actually. I was uh, going to message her. Um, I helped someone else with that. So what I'm going to do is message with a series of screenshots because I heard the frustration earlier. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, it'll be easier if I use those screenshots to do it. And yeah, I'll just have to figure out how I'm going to message her. And I think she's on Twitter. And that that'll take care of it but yeah we will have this sorted out in no time but thank you so much for um asking okay of course you're gonna have to remind me to do it 
<laughs> Hi, Bernadine Robinson. Thank you so much to be here. Oh, and don't worry, I'm not going to sing Mrs. Robinson. Or am I? No, I won't. Uh, oh, by the way, thank you so much for the super sticker. <laughs> Oh, you all, I know I'm probably a little bit too jovial right now because, well, uh, you know how the tabloids are. It is going to be hell to pay. But whatever happens, I'm so proud of Harry. I am just willing to take my chances, come what may. Uh, Andrea Allen, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. Um. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I will. Um, and Grace and Fawabi, thank you so much for the super chat. Baron, I am really celebrating Prince Harry's interview. Uh, he did an excellent job. He did. He did. And it exceeded my expe expectations. Um, he was... It just goes to show that he has, it's not so much that he has nerves of steel as it is he's just comfortable within his own skin. And that says a lot that he's comfortable within his own skin. He's not afraid to fail. He's not afraid to try. He's not afraid to stand or to fall. And as we found out from the interview, he's certainly not afraid to fight. But because he was working on his, his self, his self-awareness, his uh, mental well-being, he chose not to fight his brother. And he said that without a shakiness in his voice, without a hand trembling, without his um, esophagus tightening up, he just said what he said. Oh, my God, I'm so proud of him. I mean, there is a mixture of joy. And then also there's a part of me that is so relieved, I want to cry. You know what I mean? I'm so relieved, I want to cry. I'm so glad that these were so impressive. The interviews were revelations. They were so impressive. But in terms of the way Harry conducted himself, it was uneventful. He could have been speaking about the Invictus Games with as much conviction and it would have been just as smooth a ride. I mean, instead of riding in, let's say, a Ford Fiesta, he was in a Lincoln Town car, just smoothly going down the avenue. There were very little relation between the bumps in the road and the ride of the vehicle, if you understand what I mean. And for that, I am so grateful. I am very proud. And I'm I'm just glad. I'm you know it's two down, two to go, right? Are you guys checking them off? Two down and two to go. So thank you so much, Gracie, and thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Hello, Marshar. Uh, okay, so let's see what we got here. So the fracture, the fracture between the Sussexes and the Oh, God, I can't believe I have to say this, but the the Waleses, the, the prince and princess of Wales, it appears as though the fracture is uh, likely permanent because it doesn't seem to be a way for them to come back. Now, I hope they do. It doesn't satisfy anything in me that there is this fracture between them. But I think um, we all can agree, at least I believe we all could agree, that no matter what Harry and Meghan chooses to do about their family relations, their safety is paramount to our position. Their safety is paramount. Whatever, whatever happens, we just want them to be safe. And anything else is secondary. Um, you know, to hell with the rest of them as far as I'm concerned, because Harry has tried and there has been a two year period, two years, two years up until the point the book was finished. And I do believe that even 
up until that point in which uh, Harry was last in the United Kingdom, before the book actually was printed, I'm sure there were ways that could have explained situations as they evolved within the book. But because there was no reconciliation, because there was no apology, there, were, there, there wasn't even a conversation, there was nothing that could be done. As we've all witnessed, they attempted over and over again to cause as much humiliation for Harry and Meghan at a time when they were supposed to be celebrating the Queen's life. Um, Harry even said that, you know, that, that there was this tension, to put it mildly, that they were still up to their old tricks during the funeral. They were briefing and guys, I have screenshots. You all have screenshots. We all have a chronological timeline of how they harassed Harry and Meghan throughout the Queen's funeral, which was the pettiest of petty things to do. And I have been pretty neutral about the royal family. I have been very much um, saying, and you guys have heard me say it, there's always going to be a royal family. They may not be as po uh, powerful, but they will at the same time still be the House of Windsor. Like a lot of the other faded royal families in Europe, they may not have as much money or prestige. Now I'm at the point where I don't care if there's never a, a utterance or, or hint or whatever of a royal household with any type of legal authority over the people of Britain. I'm, I'm officially, 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 should I say, uh, done with the notion that there, there is royalty there. I, I wish the family well, and I hope they enjoy obscurity. And I hope the day when their obscurity is hastened, I hope the day when they have no uh, legal power over the people of Britain or any other realms, I can't wait for that day to come. You know, as nice and, and thoughtful as Harry is, it still could not compensate or conceal or even give any cover to the evil which is in that family. Those are some very evil individuals. Uh, the used to be Cambridges, uh, the Cornwall, whatever he is, Charles III-ish, all of them just evil, evil, rotten to the core, rotten, evil people. And time and time again, they've had an opportunity to pull this back, to pull back the attacks from the press, um, to uh, stop throwing these icy cold glances and stares. It's a weak dog. It's a scared dog. A dog that barks is, dark, is a dog that's afraid. Only a, a scared, uh, fearful dog barks. And, and that's what they are. They, they, they are in fear. They're so in fear of their own ineptitude. They are so in fear of the, let's face it, the real star quality of Harry, not to mention his wife. Uh, today, you guys, I watched one of the most brilliant, brilliantly put together videos I, I've ever seen in all of squatting them. Uh, actually, I'd have to say this week, it's, it's been two of them, Henry VIII and Duchess Royal. Duchess Royal, um, how long was that video? 42 minutes and 42 seconds of some of the, some of the best, and I do mean some of the best um, Sussex video I have ever seen. It was so well done. I mean, I, 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 I thought I was just going to take a glance at it. I didn't know it was so long. And I ended up sitting there for the entire time. 
So if you get a chance, I know a lot of you guys went over there and subscribed. Um, uh, let me tell you something. You got to get over a thousand subscribers before you have access to the community tab. So if that's any indication of what needs to be done, like I said, you have to have over a thousand subscribers to have access to the community tab. And then that way you can keep up with uh, Duchess Royal. But it was like one of the best made videos ever. Um, Henry VIII and uh, Duchess Royal. And need I say the daily, uh, mostly daily and consistent um, uh, Sherry and Charday. I mean, I'm just, you know, for some of the channels that have come along since Royal Sussex, I am constantly amazed and impressed with the quality. And that is what's going to carry the message for this so-called Sussex squad, as uh, Dan Wooten say. That is what's going to carry the day. That is what's going to get the message across um, why we are so, um, shall I say, passionate about our um, love for the Sussexes. Okay, so let me pin that to the top of the chat so you guys will have it. And then I will continue and read some more of your comments. Um, but yeah, very, very well made. I was just like, what an embarrassment of riches. Can can it get any better than this? I don't know. I hope it does. I hope it does. But, you know, it would be a pretty high bar to outdo uh, some of the amazing work that has been put out there just this week alone. And, you know, and as they say, at a time when it's needed the most, that's also very important. So, um, you know what, guys, like I say, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. That's all I can tell you. Like, share, and subscribe. And that will create a very active community where people who are trying to have community can get away from the hate channels and find some more of the Sussex friendly channels. So uh, take care of your business. Do your thing, everybody. All right. Uh, Elaine Parker, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. Happy uh, Sunday to you. A very pleasant Sunday at that. Uh, okay. Now, Helen, uh, did you just have, did you, do you have an anniversary or whatever for your men? Something came up for Helene, and I don't see it now. Oh, there it is. Okay, 16 months membership? How is that possible? 16 months? Wow, okay. Sorry, guys. My mouth is kind of dry. Okay, I thought, I, I thought it was so powerful, though, that he uh, will never brief the press about uh, family members but says, I will go on the record about how I feel. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. That is powerful. Everything that Harry said, everything, just, it, 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 it's, it's incredible the ease in which he expressed himself. Incredible. And I, I try to... Um, figure out how some of these people, even the ones who say they don't like Harry, uh, or even the ones who are very pro-royal family, and, and, you know, fine if that's what they are, but to insinuate that Harry is not that smart, that Harry didn't do well in school, that right there is the most pompous, pompous, arrogant, pretense, pe ugh, I'm sorry, let me drink some more. Okay, a uh, pretentious attitude that anyone could possibly have. Um, if if people don't get how sharp Harry is by now, then they're just not paying attention. They don't want to know. Thank you so much for your 16 months, Helene. Um, and thank you so much for your comment. But yeah, if if you don't get if you don't get Harry at this point, then you just don't want to. 
he is the best thing that has come out of that family. Um, probably since Princess Diana married into that family back in 1981. The best thing that has come out of that family, bar none. Um, let me see. Yeah, right? 16 months. I didn't even know that was possible. Okay, let me scroll back and take a look at some of these comments. Harry has come a long, long way. Harry is smarter than all of those fools. Amen. And um, oh, you know what? I tell you what, I am going to I'm gonna let you guys get a chance to make a comment. And I don't have to tell you guys, please try to keep it short, but I'll, I'll just put the link out there. Um, although I hate that I have to take the other one down, but uh, there it is. If you guys would like to um, give us a, a call in, if you like, uh, if not, that's fine too. Uh, right there. Okay. There is Harry looking very preppy on 60 Minutes. Uh, let me see. LDSW says, Prince Harry should under no circumstances travel alone to the UK. Given the abuse situation, Prince Harry must break the trauma bond with Prince William to cross out uh, persistent abuse and physical uh, holds on by, I mean, holds by Prince William when he is alone. Yeah. Um, and as, as um, oh God, what is it? Duchess Royal, Duchess Royal, as she mentioned about, because listen, you guys, I gave you the link for Duchess Royal. She outlined the way an abuser likes to keep you isolated and get you alone so that there are no witnesses and that they can exert that control. So it wasn't until Megan went back to Canada um, that, you know, at that point, up until that point, oh, no, we can't meet. We can't meet. And then the minute Megan is gone, then all of a sudden there's the Sandringham Summit, which leads us to understand exactly what it is. They wanted to isolate Harry because William, the abuser, realizes that's the only way that I can uh, catch him off guard, right? Is to make sure that any type of protection that he has from his wife, any type of emotional connection is severed long enough so that we can, um, you know, start to, to work our magic on him. But the bond between husband and wife and child was so strong, it just wasn't possible. And I'm pretty sure that they were hoping that, you know, with the five options, that he would take the first option, but only for himself alone, not for the rest of the family. Leave them in America somewhere and you come over here and, you know, be our chew toy again. And that, of course, was off the table. That wasn't going to work out. But uh, Harry uh, did point out that, um, you know, that, you know, <clears throat> listen, let me just get to the point here. Camilla. <laughs> let us get to Camilla, shall we? Um, for all of the times that people have said, and it's mostly in the comments, you know, it was kind of fun when you had the dogs barking, but now I think it's really in poor taste. Or you really shouldn't compare her to horses. <laughs> There's been a few things that people have said in the comments, and of course they're blocked forever, but there's been a few things that people have said in the comments in defense of Camilla. And while, while I agree with them in principle, at the same time, I think that given the very covert campaign against Princess Diana, I feel justified. I feel like I am being a tool for uh, Diana 
in some form or fashion um, to remind people exactly what has happened. And I, you know, just like uh, Princess Diana's brother said, you can draw a direct line between the introduction of uh, what is his name, uh, the journalist, uh, to the day that I introduced my sister to him um, and her dying in that tunnel in Paris. Well, similarly, I think that you can draw a direct line between um, <clears throat> Camilla and Princess Diana being in that tunnel in Paris. I think there's another line to be drawn. Uh, Colorless says, oh, it's a super sticker. Thank you so much, Colorless. And thank you so much for being here on this fine Sunday. And um, uh, yeah, happy Sunday to you. Thank you. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex and being a member. Okay, so there is Lambert uh, has just rang in. Now, Lambert, I hope you know you're on screen. You can turn that off if you like. Or would you prefer to be on screen? Are you okay? Oh, you know what? I don't have to put you on screen. I can just, uh, let me see. I can, I think this works. Let me try it. Let me try it. Um, do that. And nope. Well, okay. I guess you're on screen then. Or I can, uh, nope, I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's tea time. I think it's tea time. I didn't really think this through before I started. Okay. So Lambert, uh, uh, you're in. Uh, how are you today? Oh, let me see. I got to get you. Oh, your mic's not on. Let me see. Unmute mic. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Please talk to us. How are you doing today? Did you I'm watch good. minutes or did you watch uh, Tom Bradby? Well, well, I I did not uh, uh, watch Tom Bradley, but I listened to uh, the other the other one, the second one, uh, Cooper, okay. Cooper via the um uh, the the link that you gave, and okay. uh, it, it was super impressive. I right. like I like the 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 way Harry brings out his messages. He's never in a hurry. He articulates very well, and you could you could absorb every let every word. And there's something I be, I've been that's been bothering me for some time. And every time somebody mentions that he wasn't doing so well at school, it peeps me off mm -hmm. because what happened to Harry during his school days, particularly after his mother died, is that it was this, it, the whole system was de designed to make him look stupid. Mm -hmm. But Harry was always a bright kid. He yes. demonstrated that. But the 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 spare thing was was right through his school his school years after his mother died. If she was alive, she would have eliminated that. But the fact that she was gone, then they just used it up on him to make him look look foolish. But Harry is no stupid guy. He is very bright. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the fact that. He was always inclined to overlook the races, although he was he was not fully conscious of how deep this thing went. Yet he always followed his mother's footsteps and it did not make a difference whether someone was black, white, purple, green, or gray. It didn't. It did not make a difference for him. And for this, I love the young man. Everything about Harry, I love it. He's not perfect. I know he's not perfect, and I'm. I, I'm. 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 I'm an African, but I love the guy because of the, what he stands for. Thank you very much. And listen, um, uh, back, uh, I, I, I listen to you all the time. You may not hear me, but I'm always there. And you are, you are special. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And, and um, thank you so much um, for uh, calling in because as it's been pointed out, I'm sure you've heard other uh content creators say it, there aren't that many men in the Sussex squad, at least of all that we ever hear from. It's about 10%. And uh, to hear another man's voice in these circles is like the icing on the cake. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for taking the time 
to um, tell us about your impression with the uh, 60 Minutes. Well, can I ask you, uh, with the 60 Minutes interview, in terms of Harry uh, speaking his truth, um, did you ever feel like he was holding back on anything? Or did you feel like Anderson Cooper was asking good questions, fair questions? Um, I don't really detect any I got you's, but then again, it's hard to have an I got you when it's someone being so uh, forward and truthful. So uh, overall, your impression of it, do you think that, um, you know, Harry uh, did exactly what needed to be done? Do you think that he was able to articulate his points well enough that people are going to have to really work to find criticism? I I noticed that he was not out to get even with anyone. Right. He just, he just wanted to get the his truth out there. Because I listen, I, I see what the trolls write. Sometimes I take them on, sometimes I just pass on straight. Uh, he got his truth out there, and you can still see that within Harry is a love for family. But mm -hmm. the family have not been kind to him, particularly when Megan entered the scene. And I see something I've been reading, I've been listening, I see something in there from his brother's side. The wife was eyeing somebody and he was eyeing another person. That's what I'm, I'm getting there. I may not be, be fair, but that's what I'm reading. Right. Okay. And, and he was not out to get to get even if anyone he was just out to present his truth because I know he could have said a lot more but he just yeah. presented what was truth well there's other books coming so I think that you know I, I tell you this they have an opportunity the first book is out there he's offering and maybe this is part of the plan he's offering a chance to reconcile there are other books coming now the tone and the texture of the books, I think that that will be uh, partly dis, uh, based upon how they react to this period in time. So I think the ball is in their court. They have an opportunity to reconcile with him. You know, hey, we don't have to be together. We don't have to, you know, spend holidays together. But let's get the conversation started and stop briefing against us. That's the important thing. They need to stop the briefing. And even though they're throwing stones and hiding their hands, it's still a briefing. He knows it. And, and this idea that he's paranoid, I think he's totally uh, dispelled any idea that he's walking around in paranoia. He seems to be very much in command of his thoughts and that he can, you know, see exactly what playbook they're using and he's you know letting them know i see what you're doing but it's not working it's not going to work so i think that you know from these interviews there there's going to be a few people who were feeding into or accepting this oh harry is paranoid and delusional um you know no disrespect to diana but he was able to put things out there in, in a way that there was, it wasn't breathy, there was no hesitation. And least of all, the big difference is between himself and his mother, she was still part of the institution or at least, you know, geographically there because of her kids. He has his kids away from the institution. He's away from the institution. He has no, you know, day-to-day -day address at the institution. So he's out of there. And that's why he can be more relaxed Absolutely. and less cautious about the way he speaks about his family. But if he was still there, then there would be so, uh, you know, there would be fewer things that he could say if you live right next door to, you know, Adelaide Cottage or Windsor Castle. So... I think that's the big difference between himself and his mother is that he's he's so far removed from all of that. His life is in California. And like he said, whether you like it or not, 
this is as happy as I've ever been in my whole adult life. And there's no idea of me ever going back again. So um, point made. And he, he let them know that if you think I'm trying to get back. And I hope the press finally, finally accepts that. Not that it it's, um, I don't know who the press is talking to when they say that there's no possible chance of, of coming back now. <laughs> I'm like, did you see his house? <laughs> <laughs> did you see his house? It's not Nottingham Cottage, and it's certainly uh, better than um, Frogmore. So uh, he owns property in Southern California. Who walks away from that? Are you mad? Oh, my God. What are these people thinking? And, Byron, one more thing. Okay. You know, being from a country that was part of the Commonwealth, we out here never believed the story that gave surrounding his mother's death. We never believed that. And to date, I'm a senior citizen. That story has not convinced me at all. These people, somebody got her out of the way in order for what's is taking place today to have happened. That's the way we feel about it out here in the Commonwealth. Yeah, and you know what? There's enough people here in the United States that feel the same. And even Trevor Noah just blurted it out. <laughs> when the Queen died, he, you know, was part of his comedy. But at the same time, you know, comedy kind of reflects real life. And even Trevor Noah just said something to the effect of killing Princess Diana. So, um, there's always going to be that. And from listening to the conversation today, even though there is acceptance of the situation, it still seems like even Harry feels like there's a little bit of truth to it. Now, uh -huh. who's served by that truth? And, and like he said, it wasn't that it was just an accident. He said, and no one has gotten in trouble for it and or they have gotten away with it. So it's not an indictment upon anybody directly, but it still speaks to this notion that this seems to be more than an accident, that this is a pretty much a straight shot through the tunnel. You blink your eye and you're already on the other side. And so if it was that quick, you know, to get in and get out of there, then how did this chain of events happen that night is a bit suspicious. So especially when I hear over and over again that Princess Diana always wore her seatbelt. You hear that constantly. So with that, you just can't really reconcile the fact that it was just another accident. And of course, because there are like certain things that have been inconsistent all this time. Well, when things are inconsistent like that, that usually means that someone is deliberately trying to sow doubt and confusion or cover up something. So, you know, if it gives him peace of mind and he's, you know, made his peace with it, um, you know, I, I as I always say, I am going to follow his lead, especially where his family is concerned. I'm not going to carry anger and hostility for him. However, it doesn't prevent myself or anybody else from calling them out whenever we choose to do so. So Amen. that's what I have to say about that. Amen. All right. Well, thank you so much, Lambert. And please don't be a stranger to the show. I really appreciate you giving us your wise words and wisdom tonight. And, uh, you know, uh, I guess after the other interviews, I'll try to do another call in. I hope you'll be available for that. But, but, Baron, I'm always listening to your programs. If I miss it when you're on live, I, when I get home, I, I always turn into it. So that's one of the best out there. And uh, oh. you, you, your, your taste is so high, I expect nothing but something better every time. 
Oh, thank you so much. It lets me know that the work is not in vain. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. All the very best. Take care, and um, I'll keep on listening. All right, and thank you for watching. Royal Sussex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was very nice. What, what a nice call. Uh, Legs has a super chat. Leg says, Bulliam's main problem with Megan is that H got to marry the one he loves. He sees Megan as the woman that he wanted and rejected him despite his title. It is why he wanted to subjugate her, but she refused. Speaking of which, Legs, when he went charging over there, I wonder just what on God's green earth did he think was going to happen? I don't, I, I, I still, I'm still trying to figure out when you showed up, William, what did you think were going to happen? What exactly was the exchange you anticipated? Was she, to, was she supposed to be there alone? Were you going to challenge her in front of her husband? Exactly what was supposed to happen. I'm still trying to sort that out. Um, red mist or incandescent with rage or whatever was his intentions. Please tell me what was supposed to happen. I would be interested in knowing. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much, Legs, for the super chat. And also, thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. And I'm going to try to catch up with a few of these comments here. Uh, let me see. I know they had uh, sleepless nights at Frogmore because frogs make a lot of noise. <laughs> oh, Maureen Reed, thank you so much for telling us about that. Um uh, Adrian Burrow says, uh, oh, that's for someone else. Okay, let me move on. Let me move on. Let's see. Okay, there's an agreement there. Hey, Anastasia Isabella. Uh, let me see. Uh, Sawboss TV says they messed with the brakes, uh, as Diana wrote in the letter that her husband, Charles, was trying to kill her. Yeah, um, that was very well documented. It was also demonstrated in the movie or in the series, uh, The Crown, this alleged uh, attempted murder that was, um, you know, plotted against uh, Diana. But of course, as a way of explaining it away, they pulled the fragile and, and paranoid. And even today, which is so disappointing that William would dare read that letter that was stuck in his hand and probably... Uh, pinned by the tabloids so that he could somehow um, give the rest of the tabloid media a free pass and put the blame squarely on Panorama and uh, the BBC and such so that it will almost forgive the rest of the tabloid media. It almost gives them the free pass as though they haven't done anything wrong. Let's just blame the BBC. The rest of us aren't so bad by comparison. After all, it was the BBC that had this very, and Martin Bashir, of course, that had this very horrible, uh, dodgy, questionable uh, interview on Panorama. Well, I disagree with that. It is not um, just that them, it's the entire um, industry, the entire machine known as the uh, British media that are at fault. Even some of the places that I go where I really want to, you know, see fairness, uh, uh, honest broker, it's very hard to find that uh, in the British media. And increasingly, it's difficult to find it in the, in the U.S. because the uh, legacy media, uh, the same ones that put Trump in office, are the same ones that have had this very snarky tone against the Sussexes, which is absolutely puzzling and heartbreaking. So, uh, and I think one of the big offenders, of course, is NBC. They have been particularly bad with the Sussexes and, you know, to a lesser extent, 
ABC, and probably the very least, I would say, out of the big three is CBS. But Fox News, you know, which is kind of Johnny come lately to the network business, they have always been pretty bad. So I don't even want to count them and put them on par with the other um, organizations. But uh, they can all they all have their their really bad moments. So, uh, okay. But yeah, thank you again, Lambert. That was amazing. Now, one of the things that I was anticipating is that there would be a great bond and connection between Anderson Cooper, a um, former war correspondent, and a person who's also experienced great uh, tragedy in his life. Um, I just, for some reason, I thought, I felt that they would connect. And they did. They absolutely did. And Anderson Cooper even commented that I didn't know that this conversation was going to, um, you know, hover around this, um, our, you know, feelings of loss or about our experiences of close and personal loss. But that's exactly what happened. Anderson Cooper's father died when he was 10 years old. And then, of course, his brother took that terrible, I guess, what was it, a leap from the roof of the building? After years of uh, suffering from mental illness, um, uh, for whatever reason, his brother, you know, decided to end his life. And if I'm correct, Anderson and his mother witnessed that. I forgot how the story goes. It's been a while since I've actually heard that. But um, I think I, at the very least, I believe his mother uh Gloria Vanderbilt witnessed that. So that was um, that was awful. But um, Anderson Cooper, who has all these ghosts of his own, uh, seems to have, you know, navigated the waters pretty well. And that he's, um, you know, at the very least, he's been very productive. You have to say he's a very, very productive uh, man. So, um, OK. Let me, oh, Valerie is here. Let me do this first, Valerie. Uh, Jocelyn Young says, Baron Harry was in total control of himself. He answered all questions appropriately. He was very calm. It brings tears to my eyes. Yeah, Jocelyn, it is a mixture of joy. And then, of course, those tears of relief because um, it, there was a lot riding on this and it it just needed to to go right and you know even if some people may feel that it just wasn't the right journalist asking the questions whatever i still say that harry uh as you you know has put it you have put it so well is that he was in total control of himself and it didn't take a lot of um you know, looking up in the sky or or panning the room to try to figure out what to say next. It was there. It was just beneath the surface. He knew what he had to do. He's been working on this for a long time. And the same person that sat next to Oprah in the me, uh, you can't be, or, you know, were they in the same room? I don't, well, set opposite. Or the same person that, um, that, you know, talked on Dak Shepard and all these other places, he's that same person. It did not matter what the subject was. Part of his honesty means that you don't have, because, you know, if you're, if you're not truthful, then you better have a good memory, right? But because he's being truthful, he doesn't have to try to remember everything because it just is. So thank you uh, so much for the super chat, Jocelyn Young. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. All right. So Valerie, you are on. How are you? Hi, thank you very much, Baron. Um, good morning. Um, it's, uh, it's about 2.23 in the morning over here in the UK. So good morning, everybody, squaddies. I hope you're well. I am. Thank you so much. And I trust everyone else is after this very dramatic um, afternoon, evening for some of us. Yes. And what I have to say is that I did watch bits and pieces of the um, the first one with Tom Bradley. And I'm 
I'm yet to watch bits and pieces of the thing. I've recorded everything, so I'm going to go back and watch it. But what I have to say, I'm very, very pleased and proud of Harry, how he was able to conduct himself. I'm so proud that he's turned out to be such a fine young man. And he explains everything very clear and precise. And I think for a long time, the British media, and I feel that this has been going on for, I know we we hold on to the royal family. This has been going on for, for years. Since when Mrs. Thatcher came, back, came in and she got um, um, Murdoch involved, Rupert Murdoch, the, the standard of, of, of journalism is, is actually in the toilet. Natural fact is not in the toilet anymore. It's in the sewers now. It's been in the sewers for a long time. And even they had a a, a, um, a football a football manager called Brian Clough, and he said when Maxwell came in, and uh, when, when Robert Maxwell came in, and with um, and and Rupert Murdoch, he he said that they single handedly destroyed the British media, and he said that that was about since in the I think in the late seventies he said it. So I think what the problem is, um, the the British public are no longer informed. They're not told, you know, they're not given facts. All they're given is sensationalism. And it's become like a, 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 a um, it, it, it's, it's, it's become like a drug. You want more and more and more and more and more. And we can, and because I was around when Princess Diana was alive and, and my parents really, this, that's the only person of the royal family they liked was Princess Diana. It was this obsession with her and more and more and it got you could see it got worse and worse and worse after she divorced um um her husband and then there was they put out and said that she didn't want security because when she said when she was going um going her, around her business um some man would insult her and tell her to show her face and he's going to pay his children's fees or something like that and when People complained to Prince Charles. He said she, she they put her, she didn't want security, she didn't want security. And I suspect it was taken away from her the same way. And then it's only when she died, then you get bits and pieces, because I know the time when she died, it was it was very traumatic for all of us. But there were lots of things which didn't add up. And then when, what was interesting, when Harry said that he drove down the, the, the same route, it was a straight, it was a straight route and it was 65 miles an hour he drove. He said, the press had said, said she was driving 120 miles, that's why she died. She was driving 65 miles, 65 miles an hour, not 120. And there are lots of, I just feel that when she died, and I, I have a strong feeling that Charles felt that if she was alive, when she, um, if he, even after they got divorced, they were the spotlight would have still been on, on her. So that's why in many ways, when she died, he, he, it, he, it can result on him and Camilla. And I feel that the problem with um, the Royal family is that they're holding on to things the ideology, and we're living in a modern time. They're still holding on to ideologies of, of 1953, earlier than that, and we're living in 2023, and it can't work. And if he, if Harry is, is supposed to be the spare, and I understand that, well, the first brother, the older brother, well, he's, certain things he has to do, he's got his, 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 um, his role set out, and that's fine. But let Harry get on with his life. Because if he, because what they could have done, they could have sat down and discussed and said, well, Harry, you're not going to be king, but you still have an important role. What do you want to do? What you think? And let him get on with his life. And if they let him get on in his life, him and the, it didn't have to end like this. But they, they so want, you see, because they fed this story about Harry being the delinquent, Harry being the drunkard, and everybody said, oh, he's the thing, he's just one of us. And he's the most popular. It's almost like, as one said, that. Uh, and because he left, they've, they've taken away his, his, his crown jeweler. And I think there's too much worship of the royal family because even though they have um, they have titles, they're flesh and blood like the rest of us. They will die like the rest of us. 
Right. Very true. They, it's, the titles are something that they're born with, but talent is something that you either have or you don't. And Harry just happens to have been born and received titles, but he also happens to be very talented. And that is, you know, something that he's always been. And so, unfortunately, there is no choice about it. The primogenitor is that the eldest male inherits, at least that's the way it was. And that's just the way it is. However, in a modern age that we live in, it it, it doesn't make sense that no, you would try to suppress a talented um athletic articulate uh man like harry or woman and try to hold them back so that you can make someone who is very uh how do i put it very uh mediocre He's very wonderful. plain very it, you know, his greatest a asset is that he's been declared angry. So that's wherein lies his power. He's not likely to win a foot race. He's not likely <laughs> able to articulate a message about um, health and well-being and, and mental fitness and such unless somebody writes it down for him. But Harry can just <laughs> speak about these things. He's experienced it. He's done the work. And part of having innate talent means that you go out and you seek and you learn and you you hone your skills. And uh, William just doesn't have it. And so it's created this hostility. Well, it perpetuates this hostility that he has for his own brother. But now that the world is watching, do you really think that Anybody, including Harry, is going to be satisfied with, oh, you feeling this way about it, and that's just the way it is. But since you'll be king, I guess it's okay. No, you're not going to Margaret Windsor him. You're not going to, to do the Margaret on him. He is living in a modern age, and there are tools, devices, and, and people with, in his life that says that's not going to happen that we're not he's not going to be satisfied with that and people that care about him are not going to be satisfied with that i think the what, what a sad thing about um even with prince charles i think the sad thing with him is that um he's become a he's become a tragic king lear figure that's what i feel he is and mm -hmm. harry's cordelia without being the cordelia and i feel that and what he doesn't seem to understand his mother was handled. That's one of the reasons why when she wanted to invite Harry to tea, she couldn't, um, when she said, yes, do come to tea. And then in the end, she didn't know that her, she didn't know that she was um, told, no, she couldn't have tea. Oh, she's having, she's having her, her days, her week is before. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't even know that. And what he doesn't seem to understand. And with, with William's uh, anger and very resentment, one thing maybe William should have had therapy too, because mm -hmm. one thing with, with Harry, Harry went and had the therapy, and that's why maybe when he went into the army, he was able to. He had to get his aggression. He had to realize. He had to train hard his thing. But maybe the issue is because with this, this incandescent with rage, the reason and 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 we've been hearing about him being incandescent with rage. We've seen him even when he was a small boy. There's a video going around when what's the name said to him, uh, his mother said to him, "Come along, um, William. Come along, William." And he said, "No." He said, "Okay." But Harry's going to. Oh, okay, it's me and Harry. Me and Harry gonna have lots of fun. And then he then he he went. No, I want fun too. She said, "No, you can't have it." Also with the rabbit. Did you see the, the video with the rabbit? Mm -hmm, I, I have. Yes. And also then they have a video going around, which I was shocked. His father was sitting with, with, um, with, with um, Harry and he had his arm around Harry. And, and William was kicking his father, near his father. And the father just stood there and did nothing. Was it his knee or was he? I thought it was his elbow, like he was flicking his... Uh, yes, elbow. Yeah, I think it's either okay. his knee or elbow or something. And I was okay. shocked. And the only person who actually used to stand up to him was his mother. 
-hmm. because she used to say, no, you can't behave that way. I don't, and she would say, I don't care. Yes, you're going to be, even if you say, I don't care if you're going to be um, a king. Yes, you're going to be king, but you can't behave this way. This is the way you've got to behave. You can't right. behave like this. She used to tell him that. Now, so if that was my mother. My mother would be like, yeah, you're going to be king, but if you keep it up, you're going to get crowned right here. In <laughs> yes. You're going to get crowned. <laughs> and she was the only one who stood up to him. But then again, she too was a, she, his mother was a, um, she used to teach her, she was a teacher assistant as well. Mm -hmm. So she used to stand up to him. Well, and, 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 you know, uh, one of the, the, the little secrets about some of these very posh children, these, these upper class children is that some of those nannies whoop their little behind and the parents look the other way. Not all of those nannies are just, you know, passive about it. They can and will issue punishments to some of those kids. And I have no doubt that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just assuming, I don't know this to be true, but I'm pretty sure that when the time was right, that, that Diana would dish it out as she, yes, she saw did. fit. Yeah, she did. Uh -huh. And I think, and I think also another thing too, she had an, she used to have arguments. She had an argument with the queen mother because the queen mother used to do a thing where come Harry, um, come William, sit me, and she used to leave Harry. And she used to, and she went and told her, and she went and tell of the queen mother. So she didn't, <laughs> she, she used to tell of Diana, used to tell for lots of people. She, <laughs> But then, you know, I, I, um, but then having said so in another way, you have to look at it from another perspective too. I think with the royal family and the whole institution itself, I think that because of, you see, sometimes with the right wing press and the media, they want a world and the world they want isn't, it's not fit, it's not fit for real life. And that's why everything is falling apart. Brexit mm -hmm. is falling apart and the whole institution is falling apart. And that's why you know, even lots of people are angry. Oh, he shouldn't have said this. He shouldn't have said that. Because the reason why is because it's not sustainable and it's falling apart. And they don't want to uh, uh, modernize. At least one thing with his, um, with Harry's, I think it's his great grandfather. It, when they were Sax Coburg, they changed their name to Windsor to, because they needed to survive. But this mm -hmm. lot, they don't want, they don't, it's almost like, it's almost like, the king, um, the, um, Charles the first, he, he, Charles the third, he, he's actually behaving like his ancestor, Charles the, the first, because he was the wisest fool in Christendom, and that's mm -hmm. why in the end he caused such nonsense. And in the end, he lost his head when he finally wanted to talk, it was too late. He lost wasn't his head. It, wasn't it Charles the first who was trying to uh live like he was Louis the 14th? As they yes, say, he, he had champagne and he taste his, and beer bottle pockets. He was yes, living he, well above his means. Yeah, he was, and he bankrupted the country. And for ten years, the country went into debt because he wouldn't come to terms. He wouldn't. He, he wouldn't come to terms with the um, with Parliament, and that's why, in the end, he was um, beheaded. And the funny thing about it was that even when he was beheaded. Um, Oliver Cromwell, who um, signed his beheading, he is the um, he's a he's, he's a descendant of um, his ancestor via the female line of um, Thomas Cromwell, who was also beheaded by um, who was who by beheaded by Henry VIII, and Henry VIII, he's a direct he's a descendant to um, Charles the First via the um, the the via the female line as well via his sister. So I thought it was quite interesting. Wow. And I, yes, I, that's what I discovered. And another thing to which I found very interesting was Thomas Cromwell was um, beheaded on the 28th of July, um, 19, um, 1540. And also Charles, the, Charles I was beheaded on the 30th of, of January, 1639. Huh. Okay. Interested in the way those run together. Yes, very uh, interesting. Valerie, I got two people uh, 
uh, in the holding pattern. So I will thank you so much for your comments. Greatly appreciate it. And thank you thank so you very much, much for being with us here tonight, which has been an incredible, incredible night. So thank you so much. And thank I'm sure we're going to talk again soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, TCC Sun, thank you so much for being here. You are on. Hello there. Can you hear me? I can. Hi, everyone. It has been an absolutely wonderful day. And uh, uh, Baron, if you check Twitter, I sent you, a, uh, I DM'd you, you can delete it, okay? Okay. Okay. Um. It's been a great day. I did have the opportunity to see um, ITV as well as the 60 Minutes. Hi, everybody in the chat. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's like, where did you start? But I want to start, I guess, at the end where Anderson put the royal family on blast. Okay, okay. Said, I think it's this you're talking about, right? Huh. Where we they said we reached out. Yes, yes. Okay, you go ahead and tell it. Yes, he said. You tell it. We reached out for a comment, and the palace demanded a full report of the interview before they would say anything. And he said, right. "We don't do that." They would, they, they said <laughs> we will decide if we can have a copy before. Exactly. And we said, which of course we never do. It wasn't exactly. that we don't do; we uh, never do. Not I, which was uh, meaning not even to you. Yes, uh -huh. I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved. It. And I have to admit, I sometimes I'm so glad I'm at home because sometimes I get so loud. And if I was out in public, they would be looking at me like, "What is wrong with this woman?" I was so excited when he said this. Like, look, you don't have the same juice over here like you uh -huh. got over there. You know what I mean? This is a complete different world. Uh -huh. But what I did want to bring up is a couple of things. So I'm going to try to go as fast as I can here. Camilla, Camilla, Camilla. Uh -huh. And Baron, you are so lucky that I just respect you and how you handle your show because I will be cussing like a <laughs> sailor right now. But I'm not going to do that because I just love you. But everybody knows how I'm feeling right now. She caused problems with Diana because that was my girl. And here she come now with my faves. You know what uh -huh. I mean? This is just a demon walking uh -huh. in everyone's face. And everyone knows that she is a demon, but nobody wants to say anything because they don't want her tentacles to come out and touch them. But when you see a demon, thank you, Harry, you call them out. Because mm -hmm. if you stay quiet, they continue. So now he don't called her out. And I'm sure he's going to get her tomorrow. I think he's going to get her tomorrow night or Tuesday night. He's just keep getting her. Because as soon as it comes out in the fail, you know who said it. You mm -hmm. know who said it. And you know what they're trying to do. Now, in terms of hit that ball head thing, and that guy, little, they share that little DNA thing going on. The problem that he has is, yes, he was raised as an heir, which also means that he was with those uh, uh, other people. And they wouldn't touch him. They wouldn't discipline him because they knew what position, my opinion, they knew what position he was going to have. But his mother said, I ain't having it. You my son. I don't care. So she mm -hmm. smacked him on his butt when he needed to. And he needed more and more of that because she couldn't raise the air. We all know that. But see, uh, Charlie boy, he wasn't there either. He was too right. busy chasing a demon. So, you know, all these people over here, they were scared to chastise him and teach him manners. So, you know, he was, to my, in my opinion, he was just a kid. Being a kid, you know, the terrible twos, the trifling threes, you know, just doing what they do, but nobody corrected him. And mm -hmm. now it just carries on more and more and more. I think the problem that he does have with 
Harry is because he was raised to be the heir. They gave him all this grandioso, but then as he got older, he started to realize that Harry will have more and more freedom. He can go anywhere that he wants to go, but Harry's position was supposed to be his backup, and that really ticked him off. I think a couple of things that happened with William that really messed him up. One, he spoiled rotten. Two, somewhere along the line, they told him that you get everything. Everything in this world is yours. It belongs to you. Mm -hmm. However, including your brother. But see, because William was so lazy, Harry was out here doing all the work, developing personality and just being himself. So and all that connections. Yeah. So all that charm and everything just, just think, oozing. Think about how he spent time with the Obamas yes. the Bidens, and yes. all of these other people mm -hmm. while William was skiing and playing patty cakes. Exactly. And, and messing around. OK, and yep. trying to get a quality woman like Megan, but didn't nobody want him. See, right. And I think that's where the problem came. Now, I don't know. I never heard of it. I'm an old school makeup artist and I always loved to work on ginger women because You're a makeup oh, artist. Yeah, I'm an old school makeup artist. Some of these new okay, techniques I still got to touch. I have Go a ahead. challenge for you. Are you okay. ready? It's on uh -oh. screen right now. Uh -uh. <laughs> We're just going to roof, roof. <laughs> <laughs> now, if we need to stop down at the Home Depot uh, <laughs> to find <laughs> some epoxy. Yeah, we got to do the epoxy on that right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that is surgery, okay? Yeah, that's the lay down, anesthesia. That's the hard work right there, you know? <laughs> that's a lot going on. But is there something because i remember even seeing one of the old videos is there something out there about being a ginger because they something because they're like oh i didn't even know harry could pull somebody like that right and well what's I, going on with that in some circles gingers are treated gingers are like were were considered like the new n-word as a matter of fact oh. if you rearrange the letters you know, no, yeah. you are and, right. And and remember when they used to burn people at the stake? Well, yeah. there was always that notion that um, you know that the redheads were uh, you know kind of like and gosh, I don't want to get anybody upset when I say, this, but you know how they kind of do people that are albino, mm -hmm, how they treat mm -hmm. them differently in certain places. That's oh. Yeah, there you go, C Max. C Max said the redheaded stepchild. And you know what? Uh -huh. I have heard that for a year, but I just never paid it no attention. Yeah, there's there's always been no like uh, other they would other redheads in this way or that way, even though you know there's certain places, and maybe maybe that's something that grew out of the the Viking invasions and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of a sudden. After they, uh, you know, pillage and the up uh, the R word, and all of a sudden here comes all these redhead children or whatever. Oh. Who knows how it got started? Okay, but there's always been like an implied bias against them in certain parts of society. So, um, and and so just being a redhead while the rest of the family is blonde kind of set him apart uh, from the rest of them. So. You know, I'm pretty sure that along with everything else, they probably threw that at him. Oh, you're the spare and you're the redhead. So you were meant to be the spare and, and whatever. So, wow. yeah. Wow. And I, I, I didn't, that part of it, just the red, you know, I got the spare and they, you know, don't treat him fair and this, that, and the other. But I just didn't get it with the ginger. I'm like, why am I hearing so many? Or now maybe I'm just paying attention to it. I don't know because I love him. But it's like, why is everyone, not everyone, but some people are like, yeah, well, he's a ginger. And I didn't think he could pull a woman like that. And I'm like, why? Because he's a ginger? That yeah. To me, it was not connecting. But now I get it. But I really think that since William really wanted, well, I'm going to say yes and no. So understand where I'm going in this direction. William really wanted a quality woman, but William couldn't pull a quality woman. But he really didn't want a woman with too many qualities because he didn't want nobody to outshine him. Well, but as someone said that, that William 
had broke up with Wadey because he were tr- he was trying to send a signal amongst the other aristocrats mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. family that I'm available. Exactly. But there was nobody who, who pushed their daughters forward and was like, here, we want her to have an eating disorder and throw herself down. Hello. Why don't you marry her? Well, that exactly. Did. So then after, uh, you know, wearing them down, there was nobody left but Kate. It just made sense. And if they could, you know, try to conceal some of those, mm-hmm. you know, black cap photos and get rid of, you know, her hanging her behind out the window in college, mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Showing that cat and things. everything. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I'm you, just saying. You, you know, you can't really change that much. Uh, every time you see it, well, some of those older videos, it wasn't unusual to see her dress laying across mm-hmm. the back of the head or mm-hmm. Blowing up in her face to whatever, and then she just be smiling and uh-huh, grinning, grinning and grinning. <laughs> uh huh. But it is so sad. But I am so glad that he he's put it out there. I you know I went through some trauma as a kid myself and had to go through therapy and everything. And when you get to that certain point where you are going to stand on your own. It's a hard stance, but once you cross that line, oh my goodness, it's like the light, the sun, the light up, everything, it just opens up and it's absolutely beautiful. It doesn't mean your life is easier, but there's a certain part on the inside of you that is just say, okay, I'm good now. You well, know let what? me ask you this, if I heard uh-huh. this right. Um, mm-hmm. Was there a situation where they said, we have a picture of you using cocaine and he called it bluff only to find out that that picture did not exist. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, if he had enough courage to do that in that moment Uh when it could have been a complete disaster, what would make them think that as a grown adult man who has purchased a home in California who has several business connections and production and all that kind of stuff, what would make you think that that same person wouldn't uh, put it all out there to save his family from this very evil uh, British tabloid press and, of course, from his own family and their courtiers? I think they're so afraid of those courtiers because they know all there is to know and even with those NDAs, if you can leak for them, I can leak against you. And furthermore, um, it, it also is a matter of those courtiers. There is a bit of control there as well. Yes, it is. When you are, 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 are dependent upon someone to write the words that you'll say, Mm -hmm. to uh, deflect against the problems you encounter and such, then there's such a dependency there that you cannot live without them. And they can, you know, it's always about access. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. they may be in the position of authority as part of the royal family, but they're not immune to being controlled and manipulated either. Mm-hmm. And see, this is what I don't understand. I And it, it just could be me because, you know, I can be a little bit territorial. It's just, you know, <laughs> you hear me trying to smooth that over, right? Okay, I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. But so I understand what I'm saying. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking everybody's going to get it because everybody in here, they pretty much know when I'm in charge, I'm in charge. That's just the way it is. Mm-hmm. And this is my house. And you don't come in my house and run my house. Period. Exactly. So you can come in and you can threaten me with everything under the moon. I remember my mom and she literally taught me because she, you know, she was a physical woman. She literally said, don't let nobody come in your house and beat you in your own house. Exactly. So what I don't understand is the position that they hold in that country. What secrets do they have that they don't want to get out? Because everybody knows you've got incest within this family. 
You got affairs going on within this family. You don't have the best quality and most of you are not very educated. So Mm -hmm. whatever you have done, it is not a secret. So when they, in reference to the British media, roll up on you and say, if you don't do this, I'm going to do that. If you don't do this, I'm going to do that. This is my house. Do Mm -hmm. it. Because I'm the one who's going to handle my own reputation. So you go ahead, you leak it. You can leak it, but bet you by golly, wow, if I had as much so-called power as they had, I bet you wouldn't write another thing against me again. I guarantee it. I think William assumed that he should have the same authority over Harry that that the queen had over Margaret. But the difference is Margaret was uh, the sister of a sovereign. Uh, William was still uh, not, he wasn't even the Prince of Wales. You're like, mm-hmm. next, you're the next next. So I'm 30 something years old and you're going to insist that I shave my beard because of what? Exactly. What was he and thinking? That was a power play. That was a power play. Yes. To have some kind of control over Harry's wedding. And that's, yes. you know, a long time ago when I used to do the recorded videos, I, I said then, and I say it again, is that if Harry had stayed within that family, it would have been a lifetime of William holding the purse strings yes. and dictating his yes. life. And exactly. he would have to forfeit any autonomy, any license over his own life. Mm-hmm. And then even worse, then that would mean that you would have brought your wife and your children into that. Now, if they were fair and honest brokers, there's no reason why that could not have worked. Okay, so we will work with the family until your kids are old enough to do their thing. But we can't stay here if you're going to abuse my wife, my child, and and you still want uh, to have access to me too. There's no way in the world that that was going to work. Well, I'm going to tell you something, too. See, to be really, really honest, they kind of, they, let me say not, well, I'm going to have to say they, they kind of messed up when they got Megan because Harry fell in love with Megan and Megan fell in love with him. Megan loved Harry back. Okay, Mm -hmm. we already know how much she loved him now that all this stuff is coming out and the financial responsibilities that kind of fell on her. So that also meant this was a made woman. She was already activist. She had very strong opinions. Now, she's not violent like me because, you know, okay, but that's all I'm saying. So when he walked up there, he stuck his finger in her face. She was very respectful. And she said, (laughs) No disrespect, but get your finger out my face, okay? Mm -hmm. That is not someone that supposedly, and I mean no offense to anybody that's in here, an English rose. You see what I'm saying? Because see, from what we can see, a so-called English rose is going to be passive, laid back, and maybe just take this treatment that you give her. But Megan was already established. So I don't think, I understand exactly what you said in reference to how William felt that he could control Harry. But eventually, Megan would have left. She would have left. Because oh, yeah. they would have mistreated her. And I think she could have took it within reason. But when them babies came, oh, mama wasn't oh, yeah. having it. She wasn't going to have that. That mother bear was going to kick in. Mm-hmm. You know, let me, excuse me, Mother American Bear was mm-hmm. going to kick in and she wasn't going to have it. And Harry yeah. was going to lose her because there was no way she was going to let them treat her children like they treated a spare. Because the best thing about this book being spare, it's going to be there for Charlotte. It's going to be there for Louis. It's going to be there. They're going to find this book. They're going to read this book and they're going to say, oh, wow. Now, it's Uh, not going to be the exact same thing, but they're going to start to see the difference. Oh, this is how they think I'm supposed to live? Right. You know? It's a template. It's a a guide. It really is. Yes. To how to break the chain. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. How how to break this chain. Mm -hmm. Uh, TCC, son, I got one more person. No problem. And um, 
I thank you so much for your input. Always thank you for great. listening. Appreciate it. I'm Thanks, so glad. Guys. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. Good night, all. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Shay Doll, you're in. Good evening, Sarah Barron and rest of the live chat members. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. I have made me a little list, Sarah Barron. Um, first of all, I want to say Harry has grown up. Mm -hmm. And that's what they cannot stand. Mm -hmm. um, I remember watching a video of him and William, they were at the polo match and Harry was polishing um, or waxing or whatever you do with your, your, your riding boots, right? Right. And William had left his by mistake. He was uh, uh, just completely thrown off. Right, Harry said, I, well, I brought me an extra pair. You can use them, William. You can use them. That showed me that that's the type of person Harry is. Mm -hmm. you, the kindness, the thoughtfulness, just like Megan said, this was way before Megan. The video, I think, is still on YouTube somewhere. OK, I think the problem that they have is. Harry was willing to go along with the rules of the institution. Once he even though he was very unhappy, has been unhappy, I think he was unhappy uh, he saw the difference before Diana passed, you know, with the way he was being treated. But Diana was there to give him the love and comfort uh, that he needed and support. And I do think that Queen Elizabeth, God rest her soul, I think that because of what Margaret Rose experienced, that's why she, when Harry was young, she may have put a little more effort in uh, to not make Harry feel so excluded. It okay? was her mama that did that, but she knew better. She didn't want it to have was, another Margaret situation. So that makes a lot of sense. I could see yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's just my personal opinion on it. It was probably it, her mother that instigated a lot of that Margaret stuff. Well, that you know, Edward. I don't think it maybe. I don't think it was necessarily the Queen Mother. I think it was the institute, the rules of the institution itself. Right. Okay. okay. You know what I mean? And then they have to go along with it. They accept those rules and they're going to make everybody abide by the rules. Okay. Right. OK, so I don't think that now that Harry has when he truly fell in love with Megan, she brought something out in him. She believed in him. She made him feel or makes him feel worthy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to just be the spare. You're my husband. I love you. I'm going to support you. What are your dreams and wishes? We're going to work on that. Yeah, you don't have to sit in your house and watch a marble roll to one side because the house was built in 1669. <laughs> right. Okay, so, and then my next point is, uh, I think Harry threw a little shade to Camilla because when he talked about, uh, when they brought up the Jeremy Clarkson incident, which I saw that clip, I guess, but when he when he was asked about that, what did he say? He brought up Camilla, didn't he? Uh -huh. And that she's been working for the violence against women. That mm -hmm. was his way of saying, oh, I almost said a bad word. Um, I'm going to use the word bish, B-I-S-H. Mm -hmm. Okay. He he threw that back at her. You, you're, you're campaigning for the uh, violence against women, but yet you sanctioned Jeremy Clarkson to write that uh, in the paper. And she did. And it, it, if it wasn't her, it was Charles using Camilla to sanction it. You see what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, uh, I, I'm just going to say this. I think that given the tone of discussion and given the fact that they say that she has a wicked sense of humor and that 
we know that she's more than capable of being shady. I'm just going to assume that the tone was there and perhaps without giving implicit, you know, directions that given the friendship, given the proximity to all of what they have to offer, that even if she didn't say, and we don't know that that, that happened, but even if she didn't say, say this, these are your friends. This is the company you keep. And this is the tone that was used about your stepdaughter-in-law. Exactly. How do you um, feel about that? Are you going to speak up or speak out? Are you going to say sil stay silent and give implicit um, agreement to it or, you know, all right, or, or well, what are you going to do? And she didn't do anything. She didn't say no, anything. No, she did something. I disagree. Well, I'm saying she didn't, say, she didn't do anything to speak out against it is what I'm trying Why to say. Why would she? Why would well, she when she, when it was she, when she it sanctioned look, it? It makes her look guilty. Yeah, it makes it seem as though she has given sanction to it or giving... Yes, I, I think it was... Enemy. If it wasn't her directly, it was... Charles saying that through her. You you follow? I'm even going to go a little further and say I think it may have been the topic of their conversations. It well, possibly could have been. I'm not giving right. her a free pass. I'm just saying, you know, I as, if we're not in the room, we can't say with all certainty that that's what happened. But okay, allegedly, I'm I'm. Allegedly. I'm, I'm I just feel like that it, it, it was known right. that they were upset about that docu series, and they had that was their way of still putting Megan down. I and think, and I also docu, think that docu series though, it's been ongoing. This is not as though it's a result of the docu series. This has been ongoing. No, no, no. It that didn't come out until after the docu series aired, right. the second part. So right. that's what I'm saying. That was their way of uh, letting Megan and Harry know how they felt. Now, right. That's well, just my. You're, opinion. Right, you're right about that. I, I'll give that, you that. That's just my opinion. Okay, you're my right next point given is time, given the time that it happened. I agree with you that yeah. if, if that was the message they wanted to send. Oh, that yeah. That was the time that they wanted to send it. Right. Okay. So, my next point is about, uh, I call him Bullion because he's a bully. But I think the bigger problem here is that because the, the, the royal family and the burden that they carry as monarchy. They are uh, they are not in touch with their emotions. They've had to bury it so much, you know, that they don't even know how to express emotion. They give those fake laughs when we see them out in public. You know, they can be very cordial. You know, you know, the aristocracy is so high on manners. Mm -hmm. Really, I question that. Because like your previous um, um, call-in said that um, incest, the affairs, the woman beating, and I do fairly, uh, I do truly believe that unfortunately, KKK has been abused physically and emotionally. I also think her sons are, are, are don't show her the respect that she needs. And that's a learned behavior, as sad as it is. I, Once again, I also I believe say that it's alleged it, it may, it could have been, but we don't no, know that. No, no, sure. let me tell you why I say this. Um I my my I was married to an abusive man. He never verbally abused me, he was more physical. But the look that I have seen in Kate's eyes, 
at different points when William walks up to her or when he gives her that look, that is a look of fear. Oh God, what did I do? Did I say something wrong? What's going to happen when we get out of here? I know that look. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm saying for the purposes of being a public conversation, we have to qualify it with allegedly and and allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, most likely, allegedly, that I do believe there's abuse going on in that relationship. I think William is resentful. He accepts the position that he was born into, but he resents it also because he has to give up his life. It's not a, it's not his life. His whole purpose is to sustain that monarchy while he's on duty. Yeah. And, and when and, I say on so duty, I when mean, he comes into uh when when uh he ascends to the throne, I guess is the better way to word that. But I think that he resents it. I think that when their mother, uh, well, I'm not going to use the word I want to use, but when she, when when their mother passed, it wasn't addressed properly. I think they both, Harry and William, have a anger within them uh, and hurt, and and the hurt has manifested that. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. The hurt from losing their mother has manifested in that anger. I think they both have tempers. I think Harry has learned how to control his. He's ready to grow and move on. The hurt he feels from everything that has happened to him, uh, you know, Before the mother passed, after his mother passed, he's hurt. But he's 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 ready to grow from that and move on. He's doing the work. Yeah, he he's putting his work in. But I think the purpose of his book, and this is just my opinion, of course, but I think the purpose of his book was you look, I'm gonna put it all out there. I don't have nothing to lose. They didn't wrote this lie, that lie, this lie. Let me put it in my own words. So they right. can't dig That's up that, yes, I've drank, which everybody knew he drank. Um, I, I, this is the first I've heard about the cocaine. I knew he, his father sent him to rehab for one day. But, and like he said, he was using that to numb. But I've never see, seen that come out you know, where they made a big story of it, right? Right. So I think that the main thing is that, uh, you know, he's putting it all out there so they can't come back and try to uh, come out with this salacious story and twist it around and do this and do that, you know? Let, here, let me put this out here. Since you want to tell, I'm going to put it all out here. You know, I'm saying that in Harry's mind, allegedly, my opinion, of course, that he said, let me just put this all out here. Then they don't have to lie about nothing no more. They don't have to trade stories no more. You know, I'm not there. They can't use me like that anymore. And And they can't use Megan. It could be that they, you know, perhaps the institution or someone within the media has implied that we have some dirt that we'll put out there or we have like they tried to do him with the using the cocaine story and he called their bluff on it. Well, having done it like this, they don't have to uh, try to pull out anything or why that they have something, whatever it is. I think that this book is going to settle that. He put it out there on the table, everything from the loss of his virginity to, um, you know, uh, the party days and such, and maybe there's more to it, but this definitely takes all the steam out of it. And then my last point, Sir Baron, is I think the previous caller uh, touched on that, you know, William uh, had broke up with Kate for a while. She was crushed. But what I think is, like like the previous um, caller said, that 
uh, he was letting all the other uh, available princesses or whoever, whatever, you know, that he was available. I think it's known in their circles that he is hot tempered and abusive, allegedly. Mm -hmm. Most certainly, allegedly. That's what I think. When she said that, I'm thinking they know. Everybody knows that he has a temper. You, you know, that incandescent with rage. Right. Oh, I think it's known. I think it's a well known fact that he uh, has an anger issue, uh, among other things. And uh, no one wanted to get caught up in that. Or, or no one's family would allow them to get caught up in it. You know, mm -hmm. and, and maybe maybe there could have been a way where he could have charmed someone. But see, no one that, like Princess Diana, it was her grandmother, her father, the queen mother, and a few other people who found her and, and started grooming. Set that marriage that up, family. yes, because the and wasn't so, her... Grandmother, mm -hmm. the lady in waiting for the queen mother. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, her grandmother was. She, you know what? I'm not sure. But the family Diana's goes all the grandmother way back was. The family uh, okay. goes all the way back, but she may have been a lady in waiting. I think she was a lady in waiting. I could be wrong, but I thought she was a lady in waiting uh, for the queen mother. And so, even though Charles had dated the sister, one of the older sisters. They needed a virgin. And just like D Diana said it herself, I was no more than a brood mare. Can you imagine how hurtful that is? Yeah, it was. Uh, they had actually confirmed that um, by physician. They made sure that she was as pure as the driven snow. Right, and but so no, for Diana, Mary, can you imagine Diana. how hurtful that was for her when she came to the realization that he didn't love her? He may have, he wasn't in love with her. He may have cared for her and had some love to some degree for her, but he was never in love with her. He was always in love with um, Camila. And then I think Camila, uh, was um jealous and envious because she knew she wasn't in uh the right place in their social circle i guess is the best way to say it um uh, that, that he was never going to be allowed to marry her well, so I what did she do time, i think she manipulated i got to get this out. i think she manipulated charles because she know he was um uh an emotional, emotionally disabled because he didn't have that kind of love. He, in Charles's book himself, he said that his mother was emotionally distant and his father was mean. So who well, did he I, have to depend on? I don't really see Camilla as being all that warm herself, but you know what? But she, has she, she, she wrapped him in her arms uh and uh allowed him and gave him the warmth and love that he so craved that's the sad part that i see about monarchy yeah it looks good on the outside but no one sees the coldness you know uh, that you have to endure and that will make anyone um a kind of uh, emotionally stunted and hard-hearted. You, if you understand what I'm, I'm saying. I, I think I, I do. I do. But I, I think it's sad. Um, Camilla is not going to do any better than where she is right now. This was the this look. Was how many side pieces can say that they? Uh, no, no, uh, listen, not too listen. This is her chance to be the pretty girl. This is her chance to Sir Baron. I gotta the, stop uh, you on that. Uh 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 uh. She was never the pretty girl. You're not listening to what I'm saying, though. No. In I her said, mind, is, you're not listening to me, though. This was her chance to be the pretty girl. She knows what she looks like. I know what she looks like. When I say the pretty girl, I don't mean that it's going to change 
people's view of her. I mean, that she can be the top of the aristocratic ladder. Pretty mm. good. Okay, I this, got you. This, this is her opportunity. So there were people who have probably let her know her whole life, you are just average and you that's all you're ever going to be. And then Diana comes along and Diana has the attention that she could never have. But if she can just get to that crown, then she could have those parties where she attracts celebrities. She can be the at the very top of the aristocratic pyramid. You see what I'm saying? So I, okay, I can understand it, that. Charles I think I don't ladder. even think Charles was the ladder to the top. Charles I don't was even think it was that. Top. I don't even think it was that, uh, Sir Baron. I honestly think it's in in any woman will tell you if you got him hooked in the bedroom, that's it. Okay. She didn't care all about it. But you, you listen. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying all of that can be true, but at the end result, where is she at right now? She is about to be you, crowned queen consort. consort. She's already I, the queen. So all that other stuff is all well and good. But, you know, there's there's no such thing as anybody that's more dynamic in the bedroom than the next. That's, well, that's fine. But she has managed to do the undoable. Years ago, when she wanted to be with Charles, they said no you are not eligible because of the way you have lived your life. She has managed to circumvent everybody's expectations and now she's the queen consort. Now that is um, absolutely incredible considering where she started. She has managed to complete what her great great grandmother, the mistress to another king could not complete. And maybe that is something that she wanted. Maybe that was something Charles wanted as well. Was It's like it may even be a big joke for them that they have managed to pull this off. Because when it first started, there was no guarantee that they were going to get married ever. But look at where she is right now. Right. I mean, she, I she managed to climb her way to the top. I mean, she's there now. Like yeah, or not, but she's listen, in that position. Right. But I uh, was it, I think I was listening to your podcast or was it one of the other squaddies? But the point was made that, you know, how Kate is still not fully accepted in their social circles, circles because of her middle class or common upbringing. Now, mm -hmm. what do you think? Okay. And they may still be, she may still be getting a side eye from some people, right? If no much, I don't care how they I try to it build because, her up in the press. No, I they, they pushing hard getting, to build I, her up. I doubt if she's getting a side eye because mm. William is going to be king. They may have done that before, but anybody who gave her the side eye, they are no longer in their circle. All those people along the way, it's, it's amazing how once you're in, you're in, except for Megan. And we know that's because of right. her racial background. But for Kate, she has been accepted as the English Rose. And those people that used to give her the side so, eye so are the we're same told. ones that are going to bow and curtsy to her. So it doesn't yeah, matter. They, oh, they're going to play the role. Right. But I, I I personally still think that uh, that kitchen table talk. No, they it, it's being said, and I think the same thing about Camilla. Yes, she may have reached the pinnacle of their class system. Oh, but there are still those who are either giving that kitchen table talk, or they they will smile on her face and help build her up so they can stay in the good graces of the social system, I guess, if you want to say that, you know what I mean? But I, yeah. I think, it's, I think it's still there. Um, and then my last point is in, uh, in all honesty and fairness, 
I empathize with the whole family. I know it may be not the most popular thing for me to say, but I do empathize with them because I think it's really sad. It, it's really oh. sad. The 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 sadness, the hurt, the crab mentality that everyone has to adhere to. Uh, and the only way that uh, you're going to stay in the good graces is if you've got to go along with the rules of the institution. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. You have no room for personal growth because if you are something other than the heir, you're only a supporting player or actor, as Harry explained. So I think it's sad. All the, I, I I just personally think it's sad all the way around. I really uh, deeply empathize with Harry and Meghan, but I also have empathy for all of them. Charles, even his mother, even um, you know Philip, because he was not ever fully accepted. And he was a blood relative of, you know, not only her husband, but a blood relative. And I just think it's sad that that you're that that who whose self-esteem wouldn't be crushed when you feel when you're made to feel that you're not important. You just have to be the whipping boy uh, for your brother in, in Harry's case. You know, you never hear anything bad about William. You, everything is Harry this, Harry that. And then when Megan came on the scene, they dogged her to no end. And I think, I, I think it is, as Tyler Perry put it, the abusers, the control, because Tyler Perry laid it down. Uh, he didn't say, didn't talk long, but what he said had impact. And it was true. And I'm sure that they didn't like hearing that across the pond. But the truth hurts us all at times, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure they don't like anything from across the pond. But here, I got some more slides I need to get to. And I am going to, because it's going on like two hours now. So okay. well, thank, thank you, you for so much for the very spirited conversation. And I am going to read a few more of the comments. And um, then, of course, I'm going to try to get it because this is like almost four hours of this for me today. So, oh, wow. 1,500 people in the chat. So, wow. uh, thank you again. Congratulations. And, and thank I you so much for speaking um, to you soon. Well, thank you so much for letting me speak. And I hope everyone uh, has a great uh, rest of their evening. And uh, again, have a safe and happy new year. Happy new year. Okay. Uh, let me get back over here. Uh, but before I do that, let me uh, get this out um, just to, because, uh, I mean, after all, I think if there has ever been an occasion for it, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, hold on one second, you guys. And hello to Anita of my Duke and I. Great show today. Um, I'm going to help you with your troll situation, if that is okay with you. Uh, but I know you had some trouble earlier. Okay. Let's do this first. From the oh, sorry. That is not the... Oh, okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Give me just a second, you guys. And then I'm going to get back to my slides. And then I am going to, at some point, uh, shut it down for the day. But please have your comments ready because we're going to go back to your comments. Privileges and in the measure of your collective characters living their best life in sunny California. Now, if this is in no way reflecting anything from the duke and duchess of sussex this is my own feelings being expressed the only way i know how
that's it for now. Okay, so that is the pretty girl now. So somehow uh, she has managed to make herself available to Charles. And now she's at the top of the food chain. And Harry has pointed out that Camilla has been conspiring about certain things with certain people. In other words, Lord Nappy Head and his ilk. She has been conspiring with those people to somehow, in exchange for all the bodies left in the street, as Harry put it, um, she would say or do certain things, allegedly, that would make it possible for her to shine while other people's stars began to fade. And so it must have been really, really um, uh, a shock to her when Megan came along. But in no way can we assume that she was alone in this because not only did she need Megan to be away from that family or at least tarnish her enough that she can be controlled and manipulated, it would also help a lot of other people, including William and, of course, uh, Wady Katie. And so there has been speculation that not only does Camilla have this alleged relationship with the press, but there's also been the speculation, and that's all there is to it. We don't know it to be true, but that Kate's mother may have some friends in the media and that her mother may have possibly been the source of some of the briefing and leaking. But for the purposes of today's conversation, we are going to stick with Camilla. So um, as I uh, was saying before, that Camilla has defied the odds. The odds were against her union with Charles back in the 1970s. But if you fast forward um, to the, what, what every year it was, 2000 something, now she's married to Charles. And even though they said that she would never be known as queen consort, um, they waited until months before the queen died for the queen herself to say, listen, call that old drawn up tea bag, Camilla, the queen consort. And that's exactly what has happened. So it is ugly to look at the whole situation, but somehow Camilla has been through a lot, but she's there now. And so whether people in the aristocracy like her or not, it's just the fact she's the queen consort. Harry has accepted the fact that's his stepmother and she's the queen consort. It does not mean that we have to like her. It doesn't absolve her for any of her alleged misdeeds or wrongdoing, but it's just the fact. She is the queen consort and she is going to be crowned in Westminster Abbey. And the price that may have been paid was a constant humiliation of both Harry and William and Kate, possibly, and then eventually Harry and Meghan only. But there's a story there, and we are going to hear more about it. I can assure you that um, the Daily Mail has actually gone so far, as you may have seen, to lead with, uh, where is it at? Camilla, I mean, Camilla, the villain. And who knows, maybe with enough prompting, maybe some of her friends in the media might even turn on her. We don't know yet. We don't know how this is going to end up. But, you know, there's a world of possibilities. I'm going to bet on the Sussexes, um, as I have been doing for the longest. I think that because of their, well, I know that because of their integrity, they are going to carry the day. Uh, Pomero says Camilla will be queen, but she will always be in the dead woman's shadow. Um, what a crown to bear. Yeah. Um, like in that movie, um, what was it? Uh, Charles the Third. 
where it was kind of written like a um, it was written like a, a Shakespeare play where uh, Diana was this ghostly figure that um, would appear like some type of, uh, I guess, ghost, for lack of a better word, and like this spiritual presence that was constantly there to mess with uh, Charles's head. And, um, and, you know, literally that's how Diana has been. Um, they have managed to try to um, do away with Diana's memory. And fortunately, Harry has been more than willing and able to keep not only her, her uh, memory very fresh, but also to become the, the very embodiment of everything that his mother stood for. William's not able or even capable of that, but Harry has definitely, um, you know, amongst people who knew Diana, Harry is obviously the embodiment, the, the very spirit of Diana. Harry carries that, um, you know, in a way that, that William never could and the, in a way that Kate just simply cannot. So thank you so much, Palmer Rose, for the super chat. And let me go here. Camilla did not leak details of her first meeting with Prince William to the press, as Harry claims in his tell-all memoir. Well, now that we've heard Harry actually speak it, now that we've heard Harry speak it, that just doesn't seem to fit, does it? It doesn't seem to be very consistent with the story as Harry tells it. And even with this big head headline that says in big blaring letters, not, I just don't think people are going to believe that. This is sources claim, which means Camilla said, if you know, the thing about the briefings are correct. Camilla said that um, she did not leak details about, but Harry just blew all of that out of, you know, maybe they found out not from the um, 60 Minutes, obviously, but maybe they were able to get like some, you know, stuff from ITV. Maybe they were able to get that. They certainly didn't get anything from 60 Minutes. But it seems like this headline was designed to preempt any suggestion that Camilla is indeed the villain. And of course, I did say that they were going to do the body language thing. Well, they didn't wait, did they? Body language expert Harry shows anger and resentment talking about certain members of his family. Uh, if that was the case, then the whole thing, Harry would have been pounding his foot and, and banging his fist on the table and uh, waving his arms in the air and everything. But that didn't happen. This is so ridiculous. That just did not happen. Uh, Maji Jackson, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you so much for watching Royal Sussex. OK, and OK, we've done that one. So the company she keeps, the company she keeps, as I was saying, even if Camilla did or did not implicitly uh, agree with or say any of those things, the problem is it's the company that you keep. Now, I am going to remove Susan Hussey out of this group because Harry and Megan seems to like her. <coughs> and since they like her, I am going to just cautiously say, okay, maybe she's not as worse as the rest of them. Maybe. Who knows what she says when Harry and Meghan aren't around. But let's just assume she's not as worse as the rest of them. So maybe she doesn't belong in that group. But still, she could not um, be completely uh, removed from getting the side eye because what happened happened. So uh, it's unfortunate, but that is, but this is Camilla's circle. This is Camilla's circle. And in the wake of everything that has been happening 
for Christmas, she decides to show support for at least three of Megan's biggest um, bullies, if you will, uh, antagonists, at least three of them, she has managed to, um, you know, show her agreement with them, to show her, um, I guess, uh, approval of them. All right, so uh let me go here all right so you have this uh just take a look at how camilla uh queen consort nephew ben elliott did the did this yuga manipulation project allegedly nice job ben try brainwashing the world for uh, uh your cheeky aunt queen camilla consort queen consort camilla of course, Harry and Meghan will always be at the bottom of the, um, what is that? The, because, oh, at the bottom because Ben made it so. Royal family are really enjoying power. Um, bow to your queen consort. So what he is speaking of is this guy. YouGov British International Internet-based market research and data analytics firm conduct a survey of 4,226 Britons on Tuesday. The UK survey found that 14% of Britons have a negative view of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. After the three first episodes of the couple's new documentary series dropped last week. Now, uh, Camilla, Queen Consort of the United Kingdom, well, look at who her nephew is, Ben Elliot. That's her nephew. How unfair and how unimpartial can you be? Uh, who is the Entrepreneur Society Fixer and Tory co-chair? Ben Elliot. Uh, he's been a YouGov director, a board member at the Center for Policy Studies think tank, a partner at reputation manager, Hawthorne advisors, and et cetera, et cetera. That is Camilla's nephew. So Camilla is laughing all the way to the middle of the uh, popularity poll. Not to the top, but she's laughing all the way to the middle of the popularity poll. So she has done a lot to reform her reputation. And as Harry said, the price that would be paid for that are the bodies left in the street. Now, that was a very poignant way to put it, but um, given exactly how this adds up, I mean, let's not forget, Harry did not mention this in either interview, but they did lose a child. They have had the death of an unborn child at a time when they were under vicious attack from the tabloid media. Now, he's already said before that he hold them partially responsible for that. And we know for sure exactly where the media was in terms of their attacks, the level of their attacks when that happened and the pressure that the Duchess of Sussex was under at the time when that happened, having to flee the UK because of his brother's very bullying antics and, of course, the constant leaks. And then, of course, with the pandemic <clears throat> and the borders closing, you know, they had to figure out what are we going to do for shelter? Where are we going to live as a family? And, of course, Megan still had her mother to consider. So with all of that going on, uh, yeah, they did find a place to live and everything. Um, they had the help from Tyler Perry, but unfortunately, the uh, child uh, died. Uh, there was a death of an unborn child. Um, and, of course, Harry said what most of us were thinking, and that is, as squatties, we pretty much know, given the timetable, that we are going to hold the British tabloid media 
um, partially responsible for that. Uh, why is the smiling <laughs> like a joker? What is that? Why, if you see blonde hair and a tiara, uh, let me see, big blonde hair and a tiara, um, I don't know, maybe because someone, maybe the most unlikely individual in all of the uh, British Isles have made her way to the top of the food chain. Now that's something to laugh about. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So anyway, I played the video for you. I knew I was going to do that today. It just seemed like the time to do it. And of course, the red mist is something I've never heard of. But apparently when it's another way to say incandescent with rage. And uh, I don't know why I did this, but I imagine that the same Prince Charles who was not going to read the bench is not going to wink, wink, read Harry's book as well. By the way, how many of y'all got your books today? If you have got your books, then give us some flowers to let me know that you have your book already. Oh, let me see. Not the horse, the other picture. Wait a minute, which one was that? Uh... I don't know which one it is. Not the horse, the other picture. Or was it was it something else I had? Uh oh, I don't know. <laughs> but thank you for the super chat. I don't know which one. Are you sure it wasn't a horse? Okay. I don't know. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh man. I don't know. Okay, so um, now this one reporter, oh, let me take this away so you guys can see her face. Um, we really do need to know William's side of it. Did Harry say something to provoke William to put his hands on Harry? Royal commentator Jeannie Bond gives her thoughts to the Duke of Sussex accusing the Prince of Wales of attacking him. And... I, you know what, I, I, the first thing I thought about, well, well, you know what, it wasn't this photo, but one way that I wanted to uh, rebuff that is by sharing this photo. Obviously, we know that that's a lie. Harry has always been very supportive of his sister-in-law. Now, the caption says, the Duke of Cambridge is distracted when going out of the spirit of Cartwell, Carthwell, I think that's the name of the boat, the spirit of Cartwell. Fortunately, Harry reminds him that he has forgotten someone and he comes back to Kate amused to, to give him, um, I, you know, this is translated, I think, from French. That is French, right? So anyway, that's a translation of what's going on there. So yeah, there's no merit to those claims that Harry um, could have possibly have said something negative or nasty about Kate. Unless someone uh, shows me or, or gives me something to listen to where Harry mentions a New York black taxi or something like that. No, I'm just kidding. He just didn't do that. I know he didn't. That's That's a big lie. I mean, after all, heads together, well, look at whose head she's looking at. Or how about any other social occasion? Uh, Kate seems to be quite enamored with her brother-in-law, the very caring, sweet, sensitive Harry. And there I go even farther to say that, as Harry said, I was never really welcome to their home. Uh, they said that three was a crowd. Well, I think three was a crowd because as long as William was the only man around, then there was never any opportunity for, you know, any comparisons to the fact that William was just this brooding, cruel, mean-spirited oath, uh, ogre rather. And, um, you know, and then you have the more popular, dare I say more attractive, 
uh, Prince Harry, who seems to have great command over every room that he enters. So, yeah, no wonder uh, William was like, yeah, we don't want him over here. And then, of course, uh, Nicola Thorpe uh, had some thoughts that she shared on the um, on well on the um, Harry and Meghan, you know. Uh, so let me see if I can find that for you guys, so I can share it with you. Uh, Nicola, Nicola, where are you? Nicola Thorpe. Okay. I'm going to share that with you. At least I think that's what I was planning to do. Huh. I thought it would be right there, and it doesn't seem to be. Nope. That's not it. Okay, it's got to be one of the more recent ones, so let me see if I can find it. Although I have to tell you guys, every time I hear that guy say, you do talk a lot of rubbish, don't you? I, <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about? When the guys say, you do talk a lot of rubbish. No, you're stupid. <laughs> I feel so sorry for that poor old lady. She's like, well, I think that ought to be put right back on you. And he's like, you do talk rubbish, don't you? <laughs> oh, my God. That was my best day since Christmas when I heard him say that. You do talk rubbish, don't you? Uh, let me see. I'm almost there. Oh, let me see here. Wait, don't nobody help me. I got it. Oh, here it is, here it is, here it is. When it first came out that Meghan had made Kate cry, people didn't question that. The black woman has made the white woman cry. And then years later, we find out the opposite was the case. And now people are questioning Meghan instead of accepting it as they did Kate several years ago. It's racism. You can see the difference in how they've been treated. It's obvious to me. When it first came out, that Meghan had made Kate cry. People didn't question that. The black woman has made the white woman cry. And then years later, we find out the opposite was the case. And now people are questioning Meghan instead of accepting it as they did Kate several years ago. It's racism. You can see the difference in how they've been treated. It's obvious to me. When it first came out. Okay. I think three times was enough. But um, yeah, there you have it. So, oh, do I have a new list? Okay, I have a new list. Uh, Shelly L, Shelly L, uh, Justy Siempre, Maji Jackson, thank you all for your contributions. Also, Palmer Rose, and okay, that's the old list, right? Yeah, I think that's the old list. Wow, I still can't get over somebody having a 16-month membership to Royal Sussex. That is just incredible. Um, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. Yeah, right. She's absolutely right. Uh, Nicola, whatever her name is. Well, you guys, let's just study this for a second, shall we? Um, behind those eyes, there's either fear or terror, uh, cruelty. But there's something going on behind those eyes. But it can't be an easy life for Kate Middleton. So, um, you know, you, you make your bed and you lie in it. And that's just the way life goes. But um, <clears throat> the truth seems to have been told on various sources lately, a book, two television interviews, and two more to go. And if there is a way to make things right and Harry and Meghan are comfortable with that, so be it. Um, but all I have to say is I just want to make sure that the Sussexes are 
you know, safe and protected. And as for the rest of them, um, let them wallow in their sorrows um, because it is the price of monarchy. You want to be a queen consort, you want to be a king, then there's a price to be paid for it. Now, this is what Harry has to offer that family. If you guys recall, <clears throat> I know, can't even draw. <laughs> I know, can't even draw her eyebrows on right. Isn't that sad? You just don't know which way those eyebrows are going to go next. <laughs> uh, let me see. I don't understand why people don't talk about how Kate met William and he didn't want to talk to her about when uh, she seen her. I mean, when he seen her in the lingerie walking the runway, that's when he started to speak with her. You know, um, is it uh, Takoya? Takoya Woods? That is the story. Hey, Anna Espinoza. That is the story that they have given us about their relationship. But the truth is, the truth is, um, we really don't know. We don't know exactly. They don't give us full details about the college years. There, there is no accurate account of their college years. There is the urban legend of their relationship. And then there's the actual, like, for instance, they never um, mentioned the fact that Kate was known to have hang have, to I'm sorry to have hung her um butt out the window uh while they were in college they don't talk about that or they don't talk about there's a lot that they don't talk about that's my point there is a lot that they won't talk about and they um try to make it sound like they were just college sweethearts they have glossed over the whole weighty Katie storyline they sold a lot of papers with Wadey Katie. And if she truly had her own life, if she was her own person, um, then things would look better for her. If she had like completely rejected him, I mean completely, and let's say went on and got a job in a corporation or even she studied um, art, uh, art history, even if she had gotten a proper job, things would look better for her. But the truth is she's never, ever been financially independent. Um, she never earned enough money to maintain a household or even have roommates for that matter. So um, she was, she was just not a complete person when she got there. And so aside from the fact that she has these titles and honors that have been given to her, there's really no there there. And that's that's unfortunate that they prefer to have a separate wife instead of someone who has experienced life. Now, of course, in Diana's time, they wanted a virgin. I'm not even going to get into that conversation about Kate. I really don't care what her status was when she got married. And I really think the institution doesn't care either. But uh, that being said, William got what he wanted. He has someone that is not going to talk back or disagree and who will always be available for him. And, and he could have the life that he wants to have. He can be just another sovereign who has a side piece, allegedly. <clears throat> so, but anyway, thank you so much for your comment. Uh, let me see here. Uh, <laughs> see, you always meddling. You always meddling. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Harry, Harry to the rescue. Do you all remember when Harry went to the Caribbean and saved Jamaica? Do you guys remember that? Harry, who's not so bright. Harry, who's the uh, party prince and all that kind of stuff, this man literally saved the Commonwealth or Jamaica. And I, I, this just goes to show that 
out of jealousy and out of all of the spite and and panic of having Megan as part of the family, uh, their best goodwill ambassador, their best ambassador, if you will, is no longer available. And I'm so glad that Harry said, we are doing the same work, but we're doing it in the United States. We're doing the same work. And do you guys know the other day I heard one of those so-called royal experts, she was, I don't know what it was, but she said that instead of writing a book and whining about the royal family, if they would just do their charity work, if they... And I'm just like, girl, where have you been? Where have you been? Now, she wasn't trying to convince me. She wasn't trying to convince you. But to maintain the hate and the hostility and the discontent within Britain, you have to say things that you know are not true, also known as a lie. You have to say those things so that you will have credibility with the masses of people that are drinking the Kool-Aid. And also, you can serve the institution and, of course, the tabloids by maintaining a lie like the Sussexes are not actually working. I mean, when I heard that, I was just like, surely she's not serious. But no. They, she said that as though it were true. So defending themselves, which they want to call it whining, but defending themselves from a very aggressive, cruel tabloid media and, of course, the institution, and also, um, you know, um, doing the charity work and the... Um, having a foundation, speaking out about different things such as, you know, re food, famine relief or whatever, or, or equity in vaccine distribution. That is not work. Harry has more work by comparison since he left the institution than William will have when he's king. William's in for the big free ride. Harry actually works and people listen to him. Harry is capable of leading the conversation, not just taking written words, but have you guys ever seen William have an exchange of ideals with anybody? Do you, do you guys really think that William could actually sit next to Oprah Winfrey and be a part of a very adult conversation about mental health and fitness and awareness and sound credible unless somebody writes the words for him. It's impossible. At times when William was, was supposed to show empathy, care, and concern, it just didn't happen. He had the opportunity to prove that, you know, he's this, this, but even the queen didn't do that. The queen didn't say much, but at least she would go and have a conversation with people away from the cameras or discreetly. But he doesn't even do that. Miriam says, I felt bad for him when they said he hasn't spoke to his brother and father in a while. Sounds like Harry has been on his own since the age of 12. Yeah, I, I see that now. He has been pretty much left to his own devices and able to go out and get himself in a whole lot of trouble. And I'm pretty sure that's because he didn't feel like it made a difference. Here he is, like this incredible person that just needed someone to take an interest in him, only to find out that um, whether he did something or nothing, it really didn't matter. Because, you know, it's not like the old days where, you know, you have seven kids and if three of them survive um, past five or adulthood or whatever, you know, you're 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 lucky. Nowadays, if you're born statistically, if you're healthy when you're born and we expect you to make it. 
very different from the old days. Uh, but thank you for your comment, Miriam. Okay, you guys, let me see here. Yeah, you know what? I'll stay with this. So Harry goes to Jamaica and notice back in those days, <clears throat> his suits are wrinkled. Um, actually, his suits don't really fit. He's wearing those suede shoes, his Hallmark suede shoes. But, you know, he put forth the effort. And the prime minister uh, in Jamaica, who was bristling and, and telling him it's over, I mean, well, not telling him, but telling the world that they are heading for independence and they want to get rid of the sovereign and all that kind of stuff. And Harry came down there reunited and it feels so good reunited because we understood there's one perfect thing and sugar this one is it we both are so excited because we're reunited hey hey i mean look at that harry just Harry saved Jamaica for the Commonwealth. They were going to, they were literally going to, to just get, oh, ugh. they were going to get rid of the queen. They even got the queen's picture propped up there. And, and there you have it. Harry went down there in his little suit and put on the charm and uh, disaster averted. Uh, you know what? All that stuff we said about leaving the Commonwealth forget about it. Forget about it. Don't even think about that, Harry. We got you. Look, look at the way she pulling his hair. Like, come on over here, boy. Stop playing. No, we ain't leaving the Commonwealth. Stop playing. You play too much, Harry. We ain't, I ain't say that. I was just playing. I ain't say that. Get over here, boy. I'm just playing with you. I wasn't talking... No, we ain't leaving no Commonwealth. Where you hear that? And look, she thought she was all tough. She wore red. She was all ready to be aggressive. Now, you know when you wear red on a situation like that, that means you're trying either you're Nancy Reagan or you're aggressive, right? Well, turns out that uh, she's neither Nancy Reagan. And in the presence of Prince Charming, she wasn't so aggressive either. I mean, she don't even have any shame. She just like, I'm just, no, no, no. Who said we was, no, I ain't leaving no Commonwealth. Go away from here now. I ain't leaving no doggone Commonwealth plan. No, who said that? No, who said that? No, you tell me. No, you tell me. No, nah, we ain't leaving the Commonwealth. And then, of course, they pose for a photo. And that was the end of it. And then Harry went to go and visit other people on the island or islands, uh, dancing and such, and posing with the young people. I mean, this is what Kate and Wills was trying to duplicate when, oh, look at there. He's got on his blue suede shoes. Now, you know he made business with them blue shade, uh, suede shoes. So, um, that is one of Harry's finest moments. And, of course, him and uh, what's his name, Usain Bolt or whatever, where Harry faked him out and took a big uh, running head start. I mean, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. And Will and Kate thought that they were going to go down to the Caribbean and charm everybody to celebrate the Queen's um, Jubilee. But the truth is, it was an absolute disaster. Instead of going down there and uh, charming everybody, poor William came back with a bill. William, instead of... <laughs> instead of William going down there and charming people, he came back with a bill. Prince, 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 Trenton won $245 billion. That's what Trenton won. $245 billion. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. That's what Trenchstone wants. Yeah. What do you mean? If the Sussexes are watching right now, I really do. Could you imagine? <laughs> Could you imagine that, Sean? <clears throat> Message from the Queen. I, the Queen, ruler of the United Kingdom and the horses stables where Camilla resides. Uh, wrong picture. <laughs> we are not amused. I want to see her true picture. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so much, Sean. One more time. Okay, one more. Well, no more memes of the queen. There, but at least there won't be any new memes from Her Majesty. But yeah, poor William went down to the Caribbean, and instead of uh, shoring up his future ties as the future monarch, he comes back with a bill for $335 billion. <laughs> Harry comes back having saved the Commonwealth. William goes down there and loses half the Commonwealth and come back with a bill for $335 million. Okay, so lastly, you guys, Presidential Citizens Medal. The Presidential Citizens Medal is an award bestowed by the President of the United States. It is the second highest civilian award in the United States and is the second only to the Presidential Medal of Freedom established by executive order on November 13th, 1969 by President Richard Nixon. It recognizes an individual who has performed exemplary deeds or services for his or her country or fellow citizens. Only United States citizens are eligible for the medal, uh, which will be awarded posthumously. Uh, right here, you can see Eugene Goodman. He is still alive, by the way. That last part was for someone else. Um, he is one of the police officers at the United States Capitol on January 6, two years ago that prevented the loss of life or possible loss of life of some of the same um, people that denied that there was an insurgency. And there he is with that very cool necktie for the occasion. And not only him, but uh, 11 other people were honored, including the one that um, Don Donatella Lemon is always making Google eyes with. Uh, Michael Fanon. Michael Fanon was nearly killed by the mob at the United States Capitol because of the horrendous beating. And of course, he was tasered, I think, in the groin um, 
by his own taser or oh maybe it was one they brought with him but anyway they attacked him to the point where it induced a heart attack because he was uh tasered repeatedly um and there are some of the others along with michael fanone who testified in front of congress about the um insurgents and the january uh 6th attack on the united states capitol uh and here you can see posthumously awarded is brian sicknick um who died of a stroke the very next day after he was attacked along with his fellow officers now he was only 42 years old at the time not that it's impossible just to have a stroke but fortunately congress did not pretend otherwise. Obviously, his death was caused in part from the terrible, horrendous attack that he suffered in the Capitol. Ironically, he was actually a Trump supporter and had even voted uh, Republican, um, but th he was still doing his job and trying to defend freedom and defend the United States Capitol from these, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people that uh, stormed the Capitol that day. So there, his parents are uh, proudly accepting, <clears throat> excuse me, his medal um, on behalf of a very grateful nation. So that was it. That is the uh, medal right there. You can see it up close. It comes with a lapel pin. And I think the bigger one you can wear around your neck and the smaller one is for you to pin on your lapel. Um, Okay, and as for the Sussexes, well, um, you know, I don't want any harm or anything to come to anybody, but figuratively speaking, this seems to be the state of things. Uh, Harry and Meghan have uh, made their case and will continue to make their case, and what happens next is really up to the institution and the family as well as some of those so-called uh, royal experts and their PR people and et cetera, courtiers, the men in gray suits, uh, Rayback and all of them people, Metropolitan Police. Um, you have the information. We've been saying this for the longest time. And I think that uh, as squatties, we can all be very proud of ourselves for having put forth the effort that we have and it has not been a singular th situation. There has been so many people that have been involved up until this point and will continue to be involved, keeping the receipts. And for those of you who have taken one for the team, that means that you have gone into social media and maybe got put in Facebook jail or YouTube jail or whatever. Thank you for your contribution. Even though it's not the desired results, it's always necessary to uh, remind your enemy that we are not afraid. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, I am going to look for the um, last comments of the day. Uh, by the way, uh, the Late Show with Stephen Colbert will be the last. And of course, tomorrow morning, you can look for Good morning, America. Uh, I think they're going to drag it out for a long time. So Prince Harry, in his own words, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. So they're going to, are they going to do something on Good Morning America tomorrow, 7 a.m. Eastern time, and then CBS uh, News live special, Prince Harry, in his own words. So I guess they're going to air uh, the bulk of it. Um, Oh, wait, what is that? Is there something else? Uh, mm. So, yeah, they're going to air the bulk of it tomorrow night, I suppose. But, yeah, so, uh, so far, uh, Petal has seemed to be up to date with this stuff. So I am definitely going to pay attention to Petal's um, community tab, not to put all that pressure on her. But, um, yeah. And don't forget, there's the 60 Minutes uh, Extra or after uh, 60 Minutes where they have some more conversation. So don't forget to look for that. So uh, thank you again, everyone. Uh, it has been a pleasure. Thank you guys for, as I always say, 
Thank you for trusting me to do this work. Uh, nothing means more to me than knowing that you guys trust me to do this work. And um, I make sure that every day I, I bring the best that I can to the table. But I am not the only one. There are others out there. You have had some recommendations for other channels like Misty Blue, of course, and Anita. And as always, hello, Ivy here. Uh, <laughs> and of course, hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, I'm trying to get pedal, but I can't. I'm trying to channel pedal, but it's not working right now. And of course, Sherry and Sade. Thank you for clicking on my channel. So yes, there are others. So make sure you support these channels. But aside from that, make sure you take care of your mental health. If we haven't gotten anything out of these conversations, one thing you should know for sure is you have to protect your mental health. And please do not be more angry at any of these subjects involved than the people that are actually directly affected, meaning Harry and Meghan. Uh, you know, it's a great thing that we are as passionate as we are, but we should never be more angry. After all, it directly affects their situation, their well-being. And if they can uh, sort things out, at the very least, we ought to respect their decision to, or their choices, if you will, to you know, sort situations to the best of their ability or, or or if not, if they choose not to work it out, then that's okay too. Um, or if they can't. But either way, if you truly love and respect and support them, you have to give them a chance to um, do things their way. You can't take someone else's life experience away from them. Uh, okay, so that's it, you guys. And the last word of the day is, okay, that's it. Uh, Susie Q says, what a lot of people have to say, got to get up early for work. All right, Susie Q, thank you. That's the last word of the day. And thank you to our queens. Um, it has been a big, long process to get us to this point. But um, we're here. and. I very much am glad that Harry has been able to achieve what needed to be done. And hopefully, unlike with the Oprah interview, we can go back and reference these things more often. Uh, Oprah kind of puts all her stuff back into the vault and then you don't have a lot of access to it. But um, uh, what's this? Someone else has a channel now? Shut the front door. When did that happen? Well, congratulations. Huh, I had no idea. I'm definitely going to check that out. Let's see. I'm going to post that to the uh, top of the chat. So, and then I'm going to click on it myself. Oh, okay. Oh, that's... That's Misty Blue's channel. All right, you're sending it to Helene. Okay. Well, there you go. Either way, it's at the top of the chat. Okay. All right, you guys, thank you very much. And we've had our Ginger Avenger already to start with. So I am going to end with the um, Madam Duchess, right? And I will see you all tomorrow. What a night it has been. Thank you, everybody, for your participation and for your contributions to Royal Sussex. Okay. And thank you, Palmer Rose, Maji, Jackson, Justy, Siempre, Shelly L., and Shelly L. for those additional contributions. Oh, you know what I want to hear again, though? You know what I want? Oh, no, I, I don't have time for it. Yes, I do. Why don't I? I mean, if I was able to do it yesterday, why not today, too? No, that wasn't yesterday. This is yesterday. Oh, by the way, I got my book. In case you missed it, I have my book so I don't have to stand outside like Miss Seeley. I don't have to stand outside like Miss Seeley. 
I got my book now. I got my spare. I got my spare. So um, I'm, I'm going to ride off into the sunset because I have my spare. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I know what I was looking for. Give me a second, you guys. I know what I was looking for. It was like the ultimate takedown. Was it? We'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, you know what I mean? The double barrel finger point. I'm looking for that double barrel finger point. Oh, uh, come on, girl. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Um, mm. <clears throat> oh, and, and by the way, to um, I was a little uncomfortable with a little bit of the language earlier. Uh, the queen married her cousin, which was not unusual uh, back in those days, but the other word that was used, although it may be technically accurate. Um, I'm just going to say they married their cousins, but that other word, ooh, that makes my skin crawl. <laughs> you all know which word I'm saying. I don't even want to say it out loud, but that word makes my skin crawl. So the queen married her second or third cousin, not unusual for um, the, you know, for those days. Okay, so I can't. <laughs> Ooh, my skin was crawling. I'm just like, not the I word. No, please. No, really, please. Not the I word. That one was a little cringy for me. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't find a slide for it. Okay, slide or no slide. I'm just going to play the sound bite. And, um, and then we'll... we'll do the um, Madam Duchess, and then we'll call it a day, shall we? Oh, wait, do I have it? No, I do not have the slide for it. And I thought for sure I took that slide out yesterday. Huh, okay. All right, so tell you what, I'll just play the sound bite and then uh, Madam Duchess. Some people leave with cancelling is because many people, including myself from the black community, what I've had to do, many others, I've had to sit patiently, okay? And I've had to watch white people dictate to black people what racism is. You cannot tell me as a black woman what racism is. You cannot tell me what, uh, what racism is. I am here to tell you, just like Megan with her documentary, she's had to sit and listen to everyone tell her what her reality is. So you know what? Now it's time for her to speak. And just like with black people, you cannot come along and tell me what racism is. I am here to tell you. And the reason why, let me just make it clear for you. She who feels knows it more. African proverb. Please remember that. It will do you Thank justice. You some people leave with counselling is because many people, including myself from the black community, what I have had to do, many others, I've had to sit patiently, okay, and I've had to watch white people dictate to black people what racism is. You cannot tell me as a black woman what racism is. You cannot tell me what uh, what racism is. I am here to tell you, just like Megan with her documentary, she's had to sit and listen to everyone tell her what her reality is. So you know what? Now it's time for her to speak. And just like with black people, you cannot come along and tell me what racism is. I am here to tell you. And the reason why, let me just make it clear for you. She who feels knows it more. African proverb. Please remember that. It will do you Thank justice. You. And that is how you address Camilla Tomini. You do the double barrel finger point. Yes, B10, I know. It's just I have like a physical. It's just that when I, when I. <laughs> the very notion of that. It just. <laughs> the very notion of it is just so icky to me. 
if I, if you don't mind me talking like a teenage girl, it's so icky. Mom, it's so icky. Yeah, so um, that's... <laughs> Yuck. Okay. Uh, yes, technically it's true, but... Ugh. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. And um, thank you, B10, for making me think about that again. Ugh. <laughs> Woo! All right, so we are going to Madam Duchess our way out of here, and we've had our last word of the day. So, uh, no bad energy. <laughs> <laughs>